Second John chapter 1 verse 8 look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought but that we receive a full reward now we've been looking at the reward look at the, the ability that you can lose a reward but not your salvation and we've studied throughout go back uh, this is lesson number 43 and we picked up the judgment seat of Christ since lesson 34 so we're it's like nine uh, I don't know what you want to call these nine classes nine times the last nine series of this second John we've been looking at judgment seat of Christ because we've been looking at rewards we've been looking at crowns looking at what we earn and that we can lose what we earn but you can't lose your soul and we stopped right in the middle of a thought we stopped right in the middle of the lesson as we continue on we finished the crowns all five of them we go back and uh get those crown lessons and download them listen to them and what we're looking at is things that you can lose now it said we, we just gonna pick up here you can lose the joy of your salvation the joy of your salvation not salvation come on I want to get that straight and, and clear I am not saying you can lose your soul being saved but I'm saying there are things a Christian a born-again Christian that is saved under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ there are eternal things that he can lose and there are earthly things living today that you can lose and you can lose the joy you can you can lose the, the joy 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 that's down deep in my heart down deep you can lose that King David is a classic illustration of those who had lost his joy. David's loss of joy was due to sin and his unwillingness to confess and to be cleansed of it. Sin will ruin your joy. Now, if you come over here, is it Galatians or Ephesians? I think it's Galatians. Galatians 5. Galatians chapter 5. I know it's in there. Galatians 5.22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy. Joy is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. And when you are involved in sin in your life, the joy is gone. When tempted with lust, David committed adultery and then tried to cover it up. And he murdered. When the efforts to cover his sin did not work, he arranged for Bathsheba's husband, Uriah, to be killed in battle. He had no joy when the news came, King David, I'm pregnant. And my husband's on the battlefield, where you were supposed to be. He goes into nervousness, anxiety, fear. Gets a man drunk twice. David was out of fellowship with the Lord for nearly a year until Nathan was sent by God to confront him and to expose his sin. Now Psalm 51, we won't look at it, is David's prayer of confession and cleansing. It's interesting to see that what David asked the Lord to do in addition to forgiving and cleansing him. Now this will look at Psalm 51 verse 8. Look at two verses in Psalm 51. Psalm 51, verse 8. Now let's 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 read it. Let's read Psalm 51. And we're going to pay attention to 8 and 12. 
Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgression. Wash me thoroughly with my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sins. I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only, God, have I sinned, and done this evil in thy sight. That thou mayest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shaped in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou, thou, thou desirest truth in the inward part, in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me. And I shall be whiter than snow. Now run that to uh, Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18. Make me to hear joy. Make me to hear joy and gladness. That the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice than pain. Hide thy face from my sins. And blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O Lord, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. I had another spirit, David, saying. Let's get rid of that spirit, and let's get back with God's spirit. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Now that's an Old Testament. David's not washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's washed in the blood of Lamb. As a matter of fact, the two sins, adultery and murder, there was no bloody sacrifice. A man in the Old Testament who committed adultery or murder died and went to hell. There was no face payment outside of the sure mercies of God that, that he had on David. Now, don't you go run to say, take not thy Holy Spirit from me, and say that applies to a Christian or anybody, uh, you know, this side of Calvary. No, don't. you are misrepresenting, you are lying the Scriptures. Now, a man in the Old Testament can lose salvation. He can lose the Holy Spirit. But a born-again Christian that is saved by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ has the Comforter, and the Holy Spirit indwells in him. And I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee, and no man can pluck him out of my Father's hand. These things have I written unto you that you may know you have eternal life. Don't you dare go run into songs about eternal security. You have not studied to show thyself approved unto God. And you'll be made a shame one day. Whether you stand the judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judgment, my friend. Don't you twist scriptures just to get what you want to get. You are of your father the devil. He's a liar. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. David lost it. He lost the joy. He lost. Listen, you know, David struck up the first band of men of trumpets and string instruments and wind instruments with Asaph to, to sing praises to God and have it. He said that the, there was there was a class of Levites that were musicians and they were singers, men and women that he set up just to praise God. You imagine what it would have been like back in those days in Jerusalem not to hear this rap or, or rock and roll music come from automobiles, but hear music that praise God in the... I was going to say Jesus Christ. Yeah, I would have been wrong right there. I'm so in the Lord Jesus Christ, I'll put him in the Old Testament. But you imagine the music that he would have playing and worshiping all day long in the temple under the authority of Asaph. Psalms is your song book. These would have been sung for the Lord. Coming up with, with the orchestra for God, and you know what? He lost his joy. Why? Because of sin. If you don't have the joy of salvation, friend, you, you, 
there may be sin in your life. Lying to me. David does not ask God to restore his salvation, for he never lost. David had to show sure mercy. However, he did lose the joy of his salvation, and he does ask the Lord to restore it. You're not happy in the Lord anymore. You're not happy singing. You're not happy in church service. You're not happy doing whatever ministry God has given you. You've lost that joy. You need to do what David has done, what we just read. You need to acknowledge your sin. You need to repent of your sin. You need to seek God to wash you from your sin. And you need to ask God, I need to get it back. Don't you be afraid to say, God, I lost the joy. Can I have it back? See, you're afraid to ask God. Because you may be afraid that there may be secret sins that you don't even know you're doing. There may be sins that you know you what you're doing, and you just don't want to bring them out before God. You enjoy them. But a man can lose the joy of his, his salvation, and he can get it back. But all oh, the scars that sin leaves. David lost four of his boys, including a baby, an infant baby. His son usurped authority. Of, I mean, do you think he really? <laughs> Receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, and Lord brings joy to your heart and life. Joy is part of the fruit of the Spirit. It produces in your life as a believer. We looked at 522. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Nehemiah 910. God wants you to have joy. And it doesn't cost 1999 shipping and handling. And no, it doesn't. It is not you give me five dollars and God will give you everything you want. That's not what it is. But the Bible does say that that the fruit of the Spirit. And scriptures, God wants his people to be joyful. It was a sin for them to gripe and complain when they were in the wilderness, on their way to the promised land, milk of, land of milk and honey, houses already built, cities that were already wall, walled up, vineyards already planted, orchards already planted, the blessings. God wanted them to be happy. And they weren't happy unless their minds and thoughts were back in Egypt. God is your exceedingly, exceeding joy, Psalm 43, 4. Not only does God want you to have joy, not only does the Holy Spirit produce joy in your life, but God is to be your exceeding joy. Listen, is anything else more, make you more joyful than God? That's a sin. We're coming upon graduation time. Your child or your own graduation is better than God. That's a sin. Your mother and father. If you have more joy in them than God, that's a sin. More joy in your children, that's a sin. More joy in yourself, that's definitely a sin. Haman had all kinds of joy. Look at me. I was invited to the feast. And no one else was there. Just me. Joy. But that Mordecai. Oh, that guy. And Haman hung on his own gallows. Died in fear. Died in anxiety. Dying. You know, you can die as a born-again, Bible-believing Christian in joy. I've heard so many stories of Christians going home to be with the Lord, absent from the body and be present with the Lord. That, that, that's joyful. Now listen, the way of death fears me. I don't want to drown. I don't want to burn. But death itself is joy. I'm out of this body. There's no more pain. There's no more suffering. There's no more pills. There's no more problems. I am with the Lord. You can lose your joy of death. You realize that every day you wake up, and you're living and breathing. God has something for you to do. But listen, th th there's a timetable one day that your time will be up. Your days will be passed. 
you will not, not lo you will no longer be a vessel used of God, and God will call you home. That would be all ultimate joy. As you study and apply the Word of God, it becomes a joy in rejoicing of your heart. Jeremiah fifteen sixteen. You know what? You know what? Maybe get rid of your joy in your life. You're not in the Word. You're in television. You're in other books. You're in something else other than the Word. You got to be happy, joy with the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Please the Holy Spirit, not your own spirit, not the worldly spirit, not any spirit, but the Holy Spirit. You please and, and fertilize and, and grow that Holy Spirit, the fruit of joy. We've already said in Nehemiah, it's the joy of the Lord is your strength. Do well, you exercise your joy? Oh, I exercise my muscles. You're going to get flabby one day, and you won't be able to lift those weights. And what are you going to have then? Make yourself happy when you're getting down. Sing! I was at work the other night, and they play that junk mu music over the overhead and all that. And there was a song there, and uh, Endless Love, or... Think something like that. I said, you know, I gotta listen to this junk. And I was listening to the words and all that. I said, you know what? I was singing that to the Lord Jesus Christ. I said, Lord, let me make this song for you. I know it's too worldly, fleshy sinners singing it to, you know, no one. They don't sing it anyway. This is just singing to make money. But Lord, let me sing these words. I listen, listen to these lyrics, and you know what? That's what my love should be to you, Lord. Enjoy. Stop complaining, and you'll have joy. Get in the Word, and you'll have joy. Jesus wants to give you his joy so that your joy might be full. John 15, 11. Is there anything that you are doing in your life, anything you're not doing, that Jesus wants to give you his joy but can't? What is the wall between you and Jesus that his joy is not being given to you? And he said, I want to give it. Now I'll let you look up these verses on your own. You do a little study too. Knowing and loving Jesus Christ and expecting his love gives you great joy. 1 Peter 1 eight. Maybe you... One of the churches in Revelation, they lost their first love. A lot of marriages, they, 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 I'm not saying that they're, they're dead, but, you know, they're, you know, when you look at, look at a grill with charcoal. Even though the, the charcoals are gray, not that they're dead, they're still there. They're gray. They don't look hot. They feel hot. So if you blow on them, or the wind will give them a breeze, or you'll see the red. And the Holy Spirit. Are you letting the Holy Spirit blow life into you? Blow the joy into you? There's gray. You're, you're saved. There's the gray, but you can't see. Let the Holy Spirit blow into your life. I'm not saying like he breathed on the impossible. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm just saying this. And there's the flame. In Pilgrim's Progress, the man is throwing the water into the fire, and the fire is not going out on the other side of the wall. It's the Lord Jesus throwing oil where it keeps going. Are you letting the... the the, the, the breeze of the Holy Spirit and the oil of the Lord Jesus Christ keeping that fire going, not dying down. John declares God's word to those who wrote so that they might experience the fullness of spiritual joy. 1 John 1 4. John wrote unto us, These things have I written unto you that you may know you have eternal life. But John also wrote unto us, we can experience the fullness of spiritual joy. It's there. And if you don't have it, 
We saw that David lost it. He didn't have it. It was because of sin. We see that reading the Word brings joy. You may not be in the Word. God is your exceeding joy. Maybe you don't have all you have into God. Jesus wants to give you joy. Something is standing in the way of what he wants to give you. Is it any marvel that Satan wants to deprive you of your joy? Your joy in God. He desires you to lose your joy. Cause conflict. And make spiritual service a chore. Oh, I gotta go knock on doors. Oh, oh, I gotta go to church. Oh, fifteen more minutes sleep. Oh, something wrong. Even if you couldn't sleep the that the night before, you should wake up and say, "Go into church." I'll tell you how you it becomes a joy. Don't think, I gotta go to church. Oh, what's the Lord gonna do? No, it's I'm going to church. What can I do to be a blessing? First blessing of all is if I go to church for the Lord. That's the first blessing. Number two, if I go to church, the pastor will have somebody to preach or teach to. What if everybody in the congregation one Sunday morning or Sunday night or, or midweek, sir, you know what, I'm not going to go. One guy says, I'm not going to go. One family says, we're not going to go. Another family says, oh, no, we're not going to go. This family says, oh, I've got family things that are more important. Or uh, uh, I, I want to go fishing, and, and that's more important. I want Whatever all of a sudden, everybody in church, on one particular service time, everybody, I'm not going to go. I mean everybody. Pastor gets up to the pulpit, looks out, and no one's there. Now you decrease his joy. He will keep you from time alone with the Lord and in his word. I want, we're trying to start up this, uh, this, farmer mark, this farmer's market ministry. We're going to go more in depth into it. And we've been doing it every other week. We're going to want to do it every week. We want to preach two times. I don't want to go and take the time with the details on this thing. But we plan to make this a full-time ministry. So what does Satan do? I've been working Thursday nights. I work third shift, 11 to 5, 6, or 7, depending on what the schedule is. 11 p.m. to 5, 6, or 7. I've been working Thursday night into Friday morning. I've been working Sunday night into Monday morning, church night, of course, you know. And then Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. So we planned this new thing. I checked out the schedule last night. Schedule's there Tuesdays. Schedule. Thursday night, 11 to 7. Friday night, 11 to 7. So I'm going to get home Saturday at 7 a.m. and try to get enough sleep to be there for 930 to, to go ahead for the full-time ministry where I'm going to be up all night Satan don't want me there Satan don't want me preaching those people now I'm going to be tired I'm going to be exhausted but I gotta retain my joy You yourself can get rid of the joy in your life, and Satan can get rid of the joy in your life. Satan, you know what Satan hates about a Christian? The number one thing that Satan hates about a born-again, Bible-believing, Christ-honoring, Bible-reading, doing, verb, Christian, you know what he hates? He hates when you have joy in God and God has joy in you. Is anything that Satan will, number one wants? Satan does not want God to be joyful. And Satan don't want you to be joyful. Now listen, Satan will have you enjoy 
<clears throat> Satan will be enjoyed by you joining over your baseball team. Satan will have you be joyful in a birth of a baby. Satan will have you be joyful in a in a birthday. Satan will be have you joyful of a check that comes in the mail. Satan will have you joyful on a vacation. But Satan hates when you have joy in your salvation and joy of God and Jesus giving you joy and the Word of God producing joy in your life. And joy is the fruit of the Spirit in your life. Satan hates that and he will do anything to stop it. He will lie to you about what the Lord is doing when you go through times of testing and have adversary. He will lie to you. I'm going through now the history of Babylon. Trying to learn things. And I do not recommend any newborn babe in Christ. I do not recommend any young little child in Christ. I don't even recommend a young man in the Lord to do any of these studies. Because when you get into these studies, you start seeing that the false worship of gods have stolen from the Bible. The stories of the Bible. Samson becomes, uh, oh, what's his name? Hercules. Tammuz becomes, you know, the, the, the God that's born and dies and resurrects. And as I'm listening to these things, listen, I've been saved since 1987. I have a doctor degree. I can call myself Dr. Sally Hayward by degree. I've studied the Bible from Genesis to uh, Revelation. I have read the Bible all the way through. And I'm listening to this for, for learning and more Bible comprehension. And I'll be listening to this thing at work, says the stuff in the overhead, and, and Satan will be saying, hey, look at that. That's the same thing what the Bible says. What makes the Bible right and not that right? You guys study to show that self improvement of God and work from it need not, need not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You guys, listen, Satan will try to ruin your joy. You got to be careful. You go through trials and tribulations and problems. Satan will whisper in your ear. God really loves you. God really care about you going through this. Huh? Huh? Does he really? That loving God. And sometimes, and many times, you will listen to him. And sometimes you'll get that little spark, oh, maybe. And that's where you remove the joy, the exceeding joy of God. You know what I mean? He does not want you to have joy in church or other Christians or even Christ. That's his, that, that's the weapon of his armor. There, there are things I go to church and what other Christians are doing, they, they don't do it purposely, but Satan will use it. Ah, uh -huh, look at that. But that's the big problem when I put myself, me, myself, and I on the throne and take God off. When you take me, myself, or I... And you physically remove God off the throne and put yourself on the throne, you're not going to have joy. It's impossible. You can't have joy, which is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Listen, if joy is a fruit of the Holy Spirit and God is love, do you think Satan, the adversary, the, the enemy, the complete opposite, the Antichrist, I don't mean Antichrist the one in, in Revelation, but I mean the Antichrist. He is opposite. He is against Christ. Do you think Satan has joy in his toolbox? No. The attribute of the attributes of God, love, joy, peace are not in Satan, are not in the world. Listen, the world does not have joy. You become a fly in their wall when they're all by themselves in, in, their, in their room or their house or, or a car. Or, 
They're not joyful. They're not joyful without God, alone in a world without hope. They're in condemnation, John chapter 3 says. That's no joy. Where your soul knows that, listen, they may not acknowledge, but their soul knows they're going to hell. It can't be joy unless, unless it's cash, check, or money order. Why do you think alcohol and, and tobacco products and illegal drugs and drugs you get over the counter or drugs you can get from a doctor? Why do you think there's such a big money in those markets? Why is there such a market for toys? Because children don't have joy without the toys, and even with the joys, they don't have, I mean, even with the toys, they don't have the joy. Joy is of God. You get it from God. You get it from the G from Jesus Christ. You get it from the Holy Spirit. You get it from the Word. And Satan in the world will want you to get rid of your joy. I've got the joy, joy, joy down deep in my heart. Well, what's down deep in your heart? The Holy Spirit dwelling, the Comforter. The only way to live is to... Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice, Philippians 4.4. 4. You are to rejoice evermore, 1 Thessalonians 5.16. Even in bad times, even in worse times, even when you have to do something you don't want to do, rejoice. Rejoicing brings joy and it defeats Satan you know what defeated Satan in Job 1 and 2 Job rejoiced now after seven days with his friends okay things got a little upsetting there the rest of what 37 38 chapters Come on, there was no foolishness, there was no charge of sin against God when he lost his children. He lost it all. His great loving wife turned on him. And he's covered with boils. He still had the joy of the Lord. And God, on his throne, smiled at Satan as he walked away defeated. And then he brought the, the three friends. Eventually, Satan did get rid of Job's joy. And then you read the book of Job. Griping, complaining, backing, back and forth, argument. I swallowed up my own spill. You, you worthless decisions of no value. Blah, 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 blah. Then God showed up. And Job like David, repented and got right and the joy was restored. The joy Jesus gives is the joy that the world did not give you and it cannot take away. However, if you are not careful, you can lose it. He said, well, you said Satan doesn't want Yeah, Satan doesn't want you. Satan can put things in your life, and the world can put things in your life to try to get you away from your joy, but only you can lose the joy. You can get victory over the world and Satan. Oh, Satan did this in my life. I lost the joy. Satan's fault. No, it's your fault. Not Satan. He put it up, but you didn't have to give heed to it. Job 1 and 2 shows that. And it may be a death. It may be a loss. It may be a loved one turning on you. All those things Satan did throw at Job, but he remained his joy.
Three friends show up and they start talking. Joe loses his joy. Whose fault is it? Satan is gone in Job 2. You don't read about him anymore. But you know he's there on the scene, but, he, but he's not recorded. Job, in order to retain his joy, should have said, Hey, guys, you need to shut up and go home. That's it. I'm done. Get out of here. Elihu, you can stay and we can talk about the Lord. That would have kept his joy going. You know, if Job would have told those three guys, get out of here. Man, you, just get out of here. Shh, go. Come back another time, all right? Just go. Elihu, you stay. How short would the book of Job be? You imagine Job and I would say, Lord, God, can you just... See, one of the things I say, and I do this, I'm not, I'm practicing what I preach. When you're alone, you can't sleep. When you're alone somewhere, undistracted, when we talk about sin, we, we get rid of our joy. All right? You know what we need to do? What I do? You need to ask God, seriously, in prayer, Lord, are there any sins in my life? And I usually never get, I, that's about as far as I get, and the Lord will start showing me unconfessed sin. Sins I do every day. Sins that are written in the Bible that are wrong. And usually there's one that just pops almost first all the time. Was, I just said that prayer right now, and God said, hey, what about that sin? I'm like, oh, under the blood. Yeah, I know. What about that sin? And see, you're afraid to ask God about your sin because you know if, if you are right and you want to be right with God, you know God will tell you on your tap you on the shoulder and say, that sin that you're doing, that you know you're doing, that is wrong. And you know what the proper confession is to get the joy? Is to repent. You know what repenting means? And confess. Confess is you tell God you sin. And you don't do it no more. And you want to hang on. And hanging on to sin will not give you joy. Because you know you're wrong. You know you're guilty. And one of the things that can take away your sin away from, from that the, from Jesus that God wants you to have, that Jesus is willing to give to you, that it's the fruit of the Spirit, is you know you're, you stand guilty before God. That's why lost people, that's why the world can't have the joy of God, because they know they're guilty down deep inside. They need education to educate them out. They need religion to comfort them. You with a serious heart say, God, you show me the sins in my life that is separating the fellowship between you and me that is not giving me joy. I guarantee if you want to do it right and you're really searching God, God will, before you even ask or finish that petition, them sins will come out. God loved David so much, David didn't ask. David didn't have any joy. David was in miserable. David's comfort was misery. God so loved David, he sent Nathan. David did not ask nothing. As far as we read, as far as anything we read. We don't read anywhere where David said, Lord, what is going on in my life? Why are things so messed up? Why am I lost to joy? Why am I in agony? Why? We don't read that. Until we get to Psalms I can never, 51. Then he says, I lost the joy. Restore to me the joy. I sin against you.
Well, pain is... Job had pain. Corinthians said that the Lord will give you a way to escape. He'll be able to give you the bear. He didn't suffer more than what Jesus suffered. No one has. Well, people have been... Listen, Jesus was sinless. Jesus was innocent. Jesus did nothing wrong, and he still got the torture that he got. And with joy, Hebrew says. You can't lose your soul. You can't lose your salvation. But joy is a serious enough thing to lose. I've lost it. It drives you crazy. Until you get right with the Lord. It puts a lot of baggage and scars on your body when you depart from joy. If you have no joy today, you're a born again Bible believing Christian. Take this message to heart. You can get it back. David said, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. And now it's true, it, it's God's salvation. It's not yours. That's another problem. My salvation. No, it's not your salvation. You did nothing to, to earn it. The Bible says, not of works, least any man should boast. So why are you saying it's my salvation? It's the Lord's salvation. And that salvation, thy salvation, is the Lord Jesus Christ. It ain't you. So stop saying it's yours. Didn't know there was so much in Second John, did you? So what is what is what does Second John say that we we've been studying? Go back to Second John, verse eight. Look to yourselves. Look on yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought. The fruit of the spirit, something the Holy Spirit has wrought, is what joy. That we receive a full reward. That we receive the full joy. That you not you imagine what your life will be. Again, God is your exceedingly joy. Well, Jesus Christ wants you to have joy, John, the Gospel of John. The Holy Spirit fruit, one of them, is joy. Can you imagine what your life will be if you had the Trinity fruit and Can you imagine what your Christian life would be if you had the complete joy that God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit wants to give you? If you had the e extreme joy that God, the Godhead, wants you to have, and in the Word, it's there, it's available. Our sins are preventing us. Why don't we have the full joy? Because I've got sin, sin, sin down deep in my heart. Look at Galatians 5 again. Let's, let's, look at Galatians 5. You now we read about the whole... The, why don't we have joy? You know, God's great. Just show me this. Galatians 5. Let's, let's read. Verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Yay! Joy. Yay! Peace. Yeah, I want that. Long suffering, yay! Gentleness, goodness, faith, yay! Meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. Yay, I want those things. I want the joy, joy, joy down deep in my heart. But why don't I have the joy? Chapter 5, verse 17. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit is against the flesh. These are contrary to one another, so that ye cannot do the things that you would. But if you led of the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now, 
the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery. If you commit adultery, you ain't got no joy. Fornication. Are you involved in fornication? You can't have joy because that is the fruit of the flesh. You got the two fruits mentioned in chapter 5. The flesh and the spirit. One will give you well, the joy we're talking about, love, peace, and all that. The other one gives you, and they're both in the heart. Uncleanness. Are you unclean? That causes unjoyfulness, if that's a word. Lasciviousness. More I want, the more you're not going to get joy. Idolatry. God, God curses that. He wiped out the nation of Judah just because of idolatry. And the golden calves of Israel. Witchcraft, magic cannot give you joy. Being a witch will not make you joyful. Sorcery cannot make you happy. It can fill your pockets with movies and books, but it ain't going to make you happy. Hatred, well, that definitely is not going to make you joyful. Variance, emulations, wrath will not make you happy. Strife, seditions, heresy, envy, that'll definitely take away your joy. Murder, David. Very soul adultery, David. Drunkenness. That make you a fool. You think a drunk is happy. You think a drunk is joyful. You wait till you see what he's on his knees the next morning. Putting his face where it ought not to be made. Listen, they didn't make that thing for your face. And you see how joyful he is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, before he gets his check. How joyful is he then? Where did I leave off? Murder, drunk, reviling, and such like. Such like of the which I tell you before, as I have told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Why are you going to be happy when you're not going to be with God? How can you be happy when you were made to fellowship, you were made to worship God? Let's go to Revelation chapter 4. When you violate the scriptures, how can you be happy? Revelation 4, 11, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are and were created. You were created for God's pleasure, and if you are going against God, you are not making them happy. How are you going to be joyful? The lack of joy in your life comes down to, God is getting no joy from you. And it may be because you have not believed in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. You are condemned. You're going to hell. You will not be in the kingdom of God. And your body and your flesh and your spirit knows it. And God knows it. Or you may be saved and you've got sin in your life. You've got something other than God in your life. And you need to get it right with God. Because joy is of God, joy is of Jesus Christ, and joy is of the Holy Spirit. And I have been there where I lost the joy. And it's because of my sins. It's because I did not please God. And if you can't please God, you ain't going to get joy. And if you say you got joy and God is not happy with you, you are a liar. And you'll stand at the judgment seat of Christ or at the great white throne judgment and you'll be put down as a liar. You can have full maximum, even if there is a maximum of joy in God by being in God, by being in Jesus Christ, by being the Holy Spirit, and by in the Word. Imagine what your life will be, and my life will be, if we were to have the exceedingly great God as our joy. All the time. Every time. We're going to have that in glory. We're going to have that in New Jerusalem. But what about right now? 
We can have it now. We got to put this flesh away. We got to put our sins under the blood. We got to be cleansed. We got to please God to get joy. 